Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to see how we can use base entity in a clean architecture project. So let's continue. Let's say that in this example, we want to use four tables in our project. The first one is a courses table and in that table, we have an ID, a title, is deleted, created at, updated at, and deleted at. The ID is a long or a big int of 19, title is a string, is deleted is boolean, and the three others are timestamps, and the updated at and deleted at are null labels. Also, we want to have another table named employees, in that we, again we have ID, and then we have some strings like full name, email, phone, rank, which is integer, and the other uh, four uh, properties of is deleted, created at, updated at, and deleted at. So you can see that for now, we have the ID and the four is deleted, created at, updated at, deleted at, and they are repeating. Let's go to the next table. And in the next table, we have students. Again, we have ID, then we have full name, email, phone, address, avatar. Again, is deleted, created at, updated at, and deleted at. And also, we want to have a teacher's table with ID, full name, email, phone, grade, and again, is deleted, created at, updated at, and deleted at. It's important for us to have all of the ID and is deleted and the three timestamps in all of our entities and our tables. So first let's go and implement it in our .NET project and then we continue and talk about the problems and the solutions of using these properties. So this is a project I'm going to use in this tutorial and you can download this project from my GitHub and the link of it is in the video description. Let's start. Uh, so we have four different layers, an application layer, a domain layer, an infrastructure layer, and a presentation layer. So in previous tutorials, we implemented the DB context. Let me show you of Microsoft SQL Server and the DB context of PostgreSQL Server. And also we added a repository pattern to this uh, tutorial. So this is it. And we check that on the controllers. Let's start fresh. So in first step, let's go to the domains. For now, we have this student and it has ID name and email. Let's start. So what was the first entity that we wanted to create? The first one was a course. So uh, for now, let's uh, go to the entities and add a new class. I name it as course. And I press control dot and remove unnecessary using. Again, control dot and I convert it to file scope namespace and make it a public class, of course. So uh, in order to add the properties, I created all of the properties to save our time. So let me paste them here. And as you can see, we have an ID with type of long, a title with type of string, and boolean of is deleted, and three different timestamps for created time, update time, and delete time, and uh, update and delete times are nullable, as you can see here. So this was the first entity. Let's go to the next one. The next one is employee. So I will add new class named employee. That's it. And again, control dot, remove unnecessary, control dot, convert to file scope, and make it public. Class of employee. And let me paste them here. So as you can see in the employee, I have an ID with type of int, a full name, email, phone, rank, and again is deleted, created that, updated that, and deleted that. So let's go to the next entity. The next entity is a student. We already have an student, so let's uh, press control dot and convert to file scope. It is public. Let me delete these and uh, paste the new properties here. So for the student, I want to have an ID with type of long, and I want to have full name and email, phone, address, avatar, and the boolean of is deleted and the three timestamps. Let's go and uh, add the last entity, which was the teacher. And I press control dot, remove unnecessary, and control dot, convert to file scope. Let's make it public, class of teacher. And let me add the properties here. So for the teacher, I want to have an int of ID, full name, email, phone, grade, and again, these four uh, properties is deleted and the three timestamps. So uh, this is it. We added four different entities like ID, title, is deleted, and created, updated. They are in the course. 
and then in employee we have some of them and again student and teacher so you can see that we added all of them and they are working properly but what is the problem we are repeating as you can see the id is one of them and is deleted and is three times and one two three four five so you can see that these five properties are uh, being repeated in all of our entities and this is not good because we don't want all of them to be repeated all over the entities and we may forget one of them and this is not good so what is the uh, solution to handle this problem let's go back to our slide so we implemented these four tables in our dotnet project so let's go to the uh, next slide what is the problem the problem is we are repeating these properties the id the is deleted and created at updated at, and deleted at and this is not good so what can be the solution for our problem? Well, we can create a shared data object, either a class or an interface, and we can inherit from it so that we have all of them in all of our entities. So what it should be a class or interface? Well, let's think about it. An interface is better because it can help us later with the reflections and it can act like a tag for all entities. And in the future uh, tutorials, when I implement the reflections, you can see that how useful it is to use interfaces for this purpose. Also, we must use a class. Why? Because we have a problem with interface. And when we inherit from an interface, we must implement all interface members, either properties or methods. So we will create a base entity class and we in implement that uh, members of that interface of our entity inside of it and then we use this base entity and inherit from that in all of our projects let's see the schematic of it so this is it we can have an interface named i entity and we create a class named base entity and inherit from the i entity and then we can implement this uh, i entity members inside of base entity then in all the other entities we inherit from this base entity and the problem would be solved easily. Let's go and implement this and refactor our project to use I entity and base entity. So I closed all of this for now and uh, let's close everything and go to domain. So instead of domain, I want to create a new directory or new folder and I call it as comma because this is something in shared with all of the entities. And instead of that, I will add a new interface. So in first step, what do we need to have? We need to have an I entity with type of interface. And I press control dot, remove unnecessary using control dot, convert to file scope, and we make it public. So this is a public interface of I entity. And we must have all of the uh, shared properties in it. So let me copy from one of the classes like this. So I copy all of these. And in I entity, I paste them. So what we need to have, uh, we don't need title, but we need ID is deleted, created at, updated at, and deleted at. This is it. So from now on, anything that inherits from identity uh, must implement all of its members. And another uh, useful tip, if you look at here carefully, you can see that in the course, the type of ID is long, but in the employee, the type of ID is int, in a student, it is again long, and in teacher, it is again int. And you can make geo ID or long or anything else. So the type of ID may be different. What is the solution for it? Because here you can see that we hard coded the ID. Well, we can make it generic. How we can do it? It's easy. We can receive the type of key. And we say instead of long, your type of the ID is type of key that you receive as a generic type. And this is it. So in next step, we implement base entity. So let's right click on the common and add a new class. And we say base entity. That's it. Control dot, remove unnecessary, control dot, file scope, and publish. Uh, and here we can inherit from I entity. And this I entity must be generic. So how we can receive this generic? We need to make the base entity generic itself. So let's say that here you are receiving a type of key and you pass this type of key to I entity. And now if I press control dot, you can see that it says 
you need to implement all of the interface members so I will do this and instead of this I say you are get and set and I press ctrl kd to format my code and I copy paste this for all of the other properties let me select all of them and paste so as you can see we created I entity and we inherited from that inside of the base entity and in base entity we have all of the members of our interface so from now on we can use this base entity let's uh, uh, go to all of the entities and implement the base entity so we say this course inherit from base entity and what is the type of the id well i want it to be long and because now we have the base entity we don't need id anymore and we don't need is, is deleted, created at, and all of the next timestamps. So let's press Ctrl KD. So you can see that the code is cleaner and it's better. So let's go to the next one. The next entity is employee. I say you inherit from base entity. What is the type of it? Well, it is int. For the employee, I want to use integer. So let's delete this. I don't need this ID anymore. And this is deleted, created, updated, deleted. That's good. Let's save and go to the next example. So in the student, again, we can inherit from base entity. And then we say, what is the type of you? Your long, that's good. And then uh, we can delete this ID and the full name, email, phone, everything is good. Just delete, it's deleted and the three timestamps. Then go to the teacher and inherit from base entity so what is the type of the id of you is int so let's delete id and the four extra properties that we don't need anymore so this is it let's close all of them and let's have a quick review and continue so we created i entity which is generic and it is an interface it has all of the required properties that needs to be shared in all of entities then we created this base entity, which is generic, and it inherits from I entity of with type of key, and it implements all of the members of interface, so that we don't need to implement all members in the other entities. And a good best practice is here we can make this abstract, so no nobody can create a new instance of this base entity because this base entity is just for the inheritance, not for creating a new instance. So it can be an abstract class. And then in the course we inherited from the base entity with type of long and so just we have the title and then we have this employee we inherit from base entity we have full name email phone rank then the student we again we inherited from base entity full name email phone address and avatar are the next properties then we have the teacher with full name email phone great this is it so the refactor is done no just uh, no Let's implement it and see it in the database and continue. So in first step, let's right click and uh, try to rebuild our solution to see do we have any error or not. Okay, you see that we don't have any error, that's good. And the rebuild was successful. So let's uh, start. In order to create, add them to the database, we need to use DB context and we created uh, this uh, tool. DB context, PostgreSQL, and uh, Microsoft SQL. So uh, let's go and comment this on model creating. I don't need to override it anymore. And then we need to add all of our entities that you can see here to our DB context. So let's do it. We already have a student, so I copy paste it. And I say uh, the first one must be course and courses. So after course, I want to have employee. So I say the employee of employees. Then we have a student and then we have teacher. So teacher of teacher. And I press control KD to reformat my code. That's good. So uh, all of the database configurations is done in our previous tutorial. So I don't talk about them. You can watch the playlist and you can find the link of the playlist in the video description. So we added all of the uh, entities to our DB context of 
our Microsoft SQL Server DB context and now we can create a migration. In order to create a migration, you need to uh, make sure that your presentation layer is the startup project. So I right click on the presentation and I choose set as a startup project. This is the first step. Then we need to go to the package manager console and here we need to make sure that we are on the infrastructure and we need to add a new migration. Add migration. Uh, let's say add new entities. Let's see, do we have any error or not? Also, we have, of course, we have error, but I will show you. It says that more than one DB context was found uh, and choose dash context because uh, you have more than one DB context. It's right because we have two different DB contexts in this project and it will happen sometimes. So we, what we need to do, we need to copy the name of this and I say, uh, this migration need to use dash context context of app ms sql db context so let's press enter and see do we have any error or not no everything is good so you can see that inside of uh, let me minimize this so in any migration we have an up and down and in the up uh, we have rename columns uh, so this is for the students and uh, add columns. Uh, okay, I prefer to delete the previous uh, migrations. So as you can see, it has some rename column because I already had a student in this uh, tutorial, but uh, because I want everything to be fresh, I delete these migrations completely and start again. So our, uh, let me close everything. So uh, our migration would be fresh and everything would be good. So. Uh, again, I create a new migration using dash context of app Microsoft SQL Server DB context. And this time you can see that because everything was clean, the migration created from the scratch. And now we have create table of courses, that's good, with ID and the other fields. And also we have the create table of employees with the next fields, that's good. And you can see the ID is int, but for the courses it is big int or long. And for the student it is big int or long and create table of teachers with ID of int and the other fields. That's good. Now let's create the, the database. So I use update database. And again, we need to use dash context because we have multiple contexts. So I say dash context, app ms SQL DB context and press enter. Let's wait for it. Good, we don't have any error. Let's open our database and check the result in the database. So let's open our databases and find the clean hash text. And let's go in the tables. And uh, so you can see that we have four tables. Course, let's go to the design mode. Yeah, IDs begin and we have the other things. That's good. And you can see the updated and deleted that are now labels and the case that is required. And let's also see employees. Yes, we have ID of int, the other things. Created that is not nullable, but update add and delete that are nullable. Again, the students. Yes, ID with type of big int. And nullable, nullable, and that's good. And teachers. Yeah, ID of int. Nullable, nullable, and created that and is deleted. So everything is good. Let's go back to our uh, Visual Studio. And that's it. So let's close this. And let's take a quick look at our domain. So as you can see, we added an interface of INTT, which was a generic uh, interface. And also we added an abstract class of base entity. And using this, we implemented all of our entities. And this is it. So I hope this uh, video helps you. Let me know your opinions in the comments. And uh, have a good time and goodbye.